Welcome to practice tutorials and in this video I'll be doing practice problem 14.6. Now this is the last problem that I will do in chapter 14 unless if you need any more problems in this chapter now just let me know in the comments or just send me an email or whichever method of communication you're comfortable with. So just let me know if you need any more practice problems in chapter 14. I just want to stop now uh, talking about both plots and yeah you let me know so this one actually takes on a different form for from what we have been doing all along we now have the magnitude plot given to us and we are supposed to find the transfer function which would correspond with this ball plot so what i can say is that the reasoning is the same the reasoning behind this is basically the same. We are adding components which result in the overall response or in the overall graph that we see in front of us. And to do that, we basically have the behavior of each of the components that form the transfer function. So if we had a transfer function, it would be easy, like we have been doing, to just add up the effect of each as we go along from left to right. But now we have to identify what happened for us to have this such a response and that is uh, what we're going to do now. So based on our knowledge, based on the information provided in table 14.3, we can now look at this and try to figure out what exactly happened over here. So the first thing that you notice is that the graph is actually shifted up to this point which means there was an effect uh, introduced by a constant. So a constant is the only value that can shift a graph up. Then that is something that we know. So a, a constant would, would actually have this effect, right? And it would come up in decibels, right? So now we have a value in decibels. So we have this in decibels. And we now want to find the actual value which is a real value, which we're going to have in a transfer function, because we want to have a transfer function using the normal values that we usually have. And we have to find this constant, which actually multiplied the transfer function that we're trying to find. So to do this, you're just going to say, um, you're just going to divide both sides first by 20. And you'd have this. Then you're basically going to take the power of 10. So you're going to have your, your 10 as the base. And using log rules, you just have, uh, if you take this, so taking 10 to be the base of both sides, you basically have this, which goes to 10 to the 2, which is equal to 100. So we know that in a transfer function, it's actually multiplied by 100 somewhere. Right? So that is that is one of the things that we've actually identified now. So this shifting effect, we now know what's happening over there. But now let's look at this point. Let's try to imagine our graph passing through. So let's say it was like this. So let's take it down. You're going to take it down. And taking it down, we basically want to try and see what would have happened. Under normal circumstances, now if we have a slope of positive 20 decibels per decade and it starts at a particular point, you know that we should expect to have something like this, right? It's actually a simple zero, but now it's actually been shifted up and the effect of that was seen over here, right? So what would have happened at this point for us to have such a response? You know that you'd have a simple zero and it would have this value or it would have this form. Exactly at five, we'd have, we'd have such a thing. So between this point and that point, we know that this is the effect or this is what we have. So this is let's write everything that we have so far. So this is our transfer function in red. So we have 100, which multiplies this factor, which is a zero at the top. And as we go along, that zero is still in play. This whole thing has a slope of 20 decibels per decade. But when we reach this point over here, it cancels out or the slope is now zero. So what would have happened for the slope to be zero? 
we know that we would have introduced a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade, which would cancel out the effect of this positive 20 decibels per decade. But what would introduce this at that specific point 10? So we know that that would be a simple pole at 10. It would have a slope of negative, would come to 10, and then it would have a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade. And the effect of this and that would actually cancel out. And that is why between this point and that point, we basically have these two things happening over here, right? So we basically have the cancellation over there until that point. So now at that point, we now have another change, which means these two are not the only ones that have an effect because these two would actually go on forever and ever. The other one go down here would look something like that. So they'd actually cancel each other forever. But something happened here, which led to this disturbance, which has a slope of negative 40 decibels per decade. So what would have happened over there? We know that um, at a specific point, we can come there and actually have a slope of negative 40 decibels per decade if we have a repeated pole. So this is the new slope that we have. So whatever comes after this point will actually be the only contributing factor. So such a factor would be a repeated pole. And that repeated pole will be at 100, right? So this is what we expect. Repeated pole, the power two. So that is, so that is this is what we have. This is what we basically have in front of us. And we've now extracted the effect of all of the components that we, we we are talking about. And now if you check the answer in the textbook, it's not in this form. So we actually have to make some a few transformations. We actually have to do a few calculations, but this is the answer. So we now just want to transform this answer to the S plane or to this form using this conversion, right? So there are quite a few ways that you can do this. Um, simple way or the best way would just be is uh, simply having this in this form. So just do that. And if you do that, we aren't quite done because it doesn't exactly look at, like the answer in the textbook or how you'd normally find a transfer function, right? So now let's try to transform this into how you'd actually find a transfer function. So to do that, you basically have, let's factor out the one over five over there so that the S is by itself. So factoring out that one over five, the one would actually become five so that when you multiply it, it would become one again. And now the S will be by itself. And you're going to do the same at the bottom when you have one over 10 and you have 10 over there, then you have the S by itself. Then here you'd have inside the square brackets, you'd have one, over 100, then you'd have 100, then the S by itself. So this is what we'd have. And now having this, we can basically simplify or work with the constants. And we can actually take, um, so at the top, as you can see, we have 20, so that would be 20 over there. So we can just simplify that quickly. S plus five, and apologize for having my S's look like fives, but yeah. So we have that and we have one over 10 at the bottom and I'm just gonna rearrange to start with the S and I'm gonna rearrange here as well. And we can take this out and just gonna rearrange that. So this is as far as we've come. And at the bottom, you can just see that this would be 10,000 and if we multiply by that, it'd be 100,000. So 20, divided by one over a hundred thousand multiplied by s plus 10 multiplied by s plus a hundred squared now we can take this up there and the way that you'd actually do that just using some quick math you basically multiply that by a hundred thousand so multiply the top and the bottom by a hundred thousand and the results would be this.
So let's just write it in there as well. Multiplying the top and the bottom by this. So this one would cancel with that one. And at the top, we just multiply 20 and that. And the result will be 2 million, basically. At the top, and we have S plus 5. And at the bottom, we just have everything as it was. And this is the final form that you expect your answer. But this is the final form that is provided in the textbook. And you basically just found the factors that contribute to whatever was happening in the board plot. And then we transformed everything into the S domain. And after that, you just basically factored out the zeros and the poles to finally have this form. And this is how you basically transform a board plot to a transfer function. You just identify the slopes, identify the, the contributing factors, have them in the standard form, and then factor out stuff to finally have it in this form. And this would be your answer. So that is it from this video. And that is all that I'm going to cover in chapter 14, unless if someone requests that I do more videos in chapter 14. And if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.